Jesus loves me. Kind and Heavenly Father, we come here to worship you, uh, to give thanks, and to ask, to, to tell you that we are so grateful to you. Thank you so much for all the goodness and all the blessings that we received this week. As we have our Sabbath school program, may your presence be upon us. May our songs and talents be a blessing to everyone. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. We are happy to be here, and we are blessed to um, serve and be a part of the Sabbath school. It's the first Sabbath of the year, 2024. And we are blessed, and I'm so thankful for those who have prayed for my son during his um, surgery last month. Um, his surgery was successful and the recovery was amazing. Um, today's program was sponsored, sponsored by our family. After my remarks would be a special spotlight followed by a special music by the youngest member of our family. And then there would be a health trivia 
and another special music by Sam and Ollie. May we all be blessed as we praise and worship the Lord this Sabbath day. Joshua's family struggled to survive. The 10-year-old boy longed to go to the local Seventh-day Adventist school, but his parents couldn't afford to send him. One day, Joshua and his parents went to the local market. On their way, they passed the Adventist school. Joshua heard the children singing during their morning assembly. He longed to join them, wear the uniform they were wearing, carry the books they were carrying, and most of all, sing the songs they were singing. Joshua's father saw his sad expression and went inside to talk to the teacher. Together, they went to the pastor's office. The teacher explained to the pastor that Joshua's parents wanted to send him to the school, but couldn't afford it. The pastor promised to talk to the school principal. Then the pastor, teacher, and Joshua's father prayed together. Joshua's father prayed for Joshua to be admitted to the school. The pastor was impressed with the man's faith and assured him that God answers prayers of faith. God answered the father's prayer that day. Today, Joshua is the happiest child. He wears his uniform proudly and joins the other children singing loudly and happily. The school principal found a sponsor for him, so his parents didn't have to worry about tuition. Joshua is studying hard and hopes to become a pastor when he grows up. I thank God because now I'm part of this school and I learn more about this Jesus from the school. The Seventh-day Adventist High School, Aurangabad, was started in 1989 to provide education to children from all sections of society around the campus. We have at present 202 children, and out of that, only 10 are Seventh-day Adventists. This school is a very special school because when the children are here, they are taught the love of Jesus. As soon as they come to the school, we make sure that they are come for the assembly, they have the worship, they are surrounded with uh, a lot of values that are from the Bible. This is how our school is a little unique than the others. Unfortunately, after 34 years of service, there are improvements that must be made to enhance the students' learning and safety. They lack a library and laboratory and have to travel to another school to access those facilities. Because the school has only six classrooms, they have to divide the students into two shifts in order to accommodate all 202 children. The school needs to install a water filter for drinking water and replace rickety furniture that could be hazardous. Because of uh, the infrastructure of our school, many of the children, many of the parents don't want to admit their children here. They want to, they, they always are attracted to better schools than this. But once our school comes up, I, I'm so much uh, assured with the help of God, that many of the children will come here and know the love of God. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help provide the required facilities for the Seventh-day Adventist English High School in Aurangabad, India. So we want you to pray, uh, remember them in your prayers, uh, so that uh, many children can get good education. That is a true education. Uh, from the school like our uh, school here in uh, North Maharashtra section. Thank you for supporting mission offerings. Yet love is way too much 
to give us lesser things Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops What if your healing comes through tears What if a thousand sleepless nights Are what it takes to know your name What if trials not this life All your mercies in We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear, and we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love, as if every Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Bivens. There's a Yiddish blessing, Bis 120, which translates, may you live to 120. Scientists at USC recently calculated the theoretical age a human should live to, 120. Also, Roy Wolford, a pioneer in the science of aging, suggested it's possible for the human body to last 120 years. This may be due to our DNA's remarkable ability to repair errors that it develops. Research suggests that this ability breaks down around 120. So why aren't we all living this long? On average, Americans are only living 78 years. Are there changes we can make in order to make those additional 42 years a reality? The answer is that there is not much stopping us from reclaiming those extra years 
and theoretically adding a third to our lifespans. The solution lies in eight simple remedies, which we can start pursuing today. They will make us live longer and more satisfying lives than we may have imagined. First things first, did you know that most of mankind is chronically dehydrated? The problem comes with a simple solution. How much do you weigh? Just take your body weight in pounds and divide it in half. That number is the recommended number of ounces you should drink every day. Perhaps it goes without saying, but if you're exercising, working in hot weather, or have a fever, you'll need to drink more. Most of us live rather stagnant lifestyles, yet science has proven that movement is key to a healthy lifestyle. Walking is a great exercise and most should not have any trouble doing it. Just walk at least two miles a day at a speed of at least three miles an hour. It doesn't even matter if you break this time into short periods. Do this six days a week and you will be on your way to better health. Nutrition has a profound influence upon longevity. Dr. Roy Wolford, who I mentioned earlier, was able to double the lifespan of mice by simply restricting their caloric intake. In the West, we eat far too many calorie-dense foods. These are foods that provide us with too many calories, have fewer nutrients, and less fiber. Because of this, our stomachs fail to signal us that we should stop eating, and we consume too much. By eating more whole foods, raw or simply prepared, we would naturally eat fewer calories. The old saying, early to bed, early to rise, seems to have anticipated the science of good sleep. Getting adequate rest is very important for our health and longevity. While sleeping, many important functions occur that are necessary for good health. Rest allows our bodies the time needed to repair and to restore. Vitamin D has been shown to be very important in maintaining a healthy immune system. Vitamin D is one of those substances that our bodies need to eliminate free radicals, toxins in our modern environment, which are believed to cause many of our ailments, including cancer and autoimmune diseases. Getting plenty of sunshine each day is important in maintaining high levels of vitamin D. It sounds too simple to be true, but getting plenty of fresh air is important for health. Think about it, we can go weeks without food, days without water, but only minutes without air. Remember to take some deep breaths several times a day, preferably outdoors. When we examine the habits of people who live over 100 years of age, we notice an almost universal characteristic, a temperate lifestyle. Namely, they choose good things in moderation, and they avoid things that have negative effects on their health and their quality of life. Balance and good sense are key in all things. Have you ever heard the term blue zones? This is a designation given to a group of people who have had unexpected longevity. A common factor among these people is trust in divine power. This connection between spiritual and physical health has been shown to be significant in adding years to our lives. So how do we live to 120? First, we start by beating the odds. Right now, the lifespan of the average American is 78 years. However, data suggests that if we were to follow the guidelines I just listed, it would not be unusual to live to 100 and beyond. Just imagine 60 years could be only the midpoint of our lives. If you're up for it, we'd love for you to join us on this journey to longer, healthier, and more fulfilled lives.
Yes. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. We're so happy to see each one of you today. It's a wonderful day. I hope you're not complaining that it's cold. If you are, uh, we'll see you during the summer. So enjoy it before the 120 will come to our area. We're happy to see each one of you and Happy New Year for those that we have not seen. Uh, and uh, today we have a wonderful lesson. We starting a new quarter. Mm -hmm. We're going to focus on the Psalms. And uh, there's so many great things that we are going to study and digest. Especially today, we're going to talk about how to read the Psalms. So God is going to be with us. Good morning, Brother Adi. Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. It's always good to be back to study at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And Amen. I believe that this new year that the Lord has much more for us. And as we open our heart, I think that's the only requirement that we open our heart for the Lord to impress more things on our heart. And then we go out and do not just the errors only, but doers of God's word. I, I believe it's going to be a blessed year. So I'm looking forward to, to it. And I'm really glad to be back in Sabbath school. Amen. 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 Mika. Amen. Happy, Happy to see you. Huh? We haven't heard you for a while, so uh, that's a blessing. Um, another milestone on our pilgrim's progress to paradise. Yes. And I think we're all grateful to see it another year. Glad to see some faces that we have visiting and um, some familiar faces as well. So I think we'll be blessed today as we share and Amen. as we delve into the word. And what better way to start the year than with the book of praise, Amen. which is Psalms. Amen. Amen. And with that, I think we can pray to start can you, off. Can you have an opening prayer, please? Let us pray. And Lord, we thank you that you've allowed us to see yet another year. We thank you that you've allowed us to see yet another Sabbath. And we're grateful that you've brought us to this place, Lord, to meet with you. And as we read and delve into your word, Lord, um, speak to us and open up our hearts. This we pray in the most mighty and gracious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, as we move to Saturday uh, and we read our memory text that is in Luke chapter 24, verse 44 and 45, we said there, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be, what? Fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning us. Concerning who? Concerning who? Us? <laughs> Who's me? Jesus, concerning him. Remember, one of the things that we discuss even in the past is everything is centered in Jesus. And it says, and he opened their understanding. We're going to talk about that later. Um, we're going to cover that part when it says that he opened their understanding, that they might comprehend the scripture. You know, one of the things that I see here from Saturday and this lesson for this week is this. You know, there are many people that every year, uh, when they start the new year, they start new resolutions. Right? If, it, if, if I ask, how many of you have new resolutions for this year? None of you? <laughs> Only a few of you. All right. So one of the resolutions that I always see is people saying, okay, I'm going to try this year to do the yearly what? Bible reading. And I'm going to follow up and I'm going to do it and I'm going to try to. Right. Um, but when I see here in this book, this lesson for this week, one of the things that I see is commitment. And the commitment is for the understanding on this on his word and also the commitment for salvation. You know, the songs were composed to be used in private and in communal worship. Amen. So. When I mean, it, I, I don't see any difference because in private we can also read the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And when we come to the church, we worship His name, so we're still in there. But there's so many rich blessings for each one of us when we come 
to the Word of God. And when we understand that the Holy Spirit was the one that inspired the psalmist to use their ability, their talent, their gift, to be used to serve the Lord. To be used to serve the Lord. That's why when you and I come and read the Word of God, we can identify ourselves there because it's speaking to us, speaking about us, and it's speaking about our daily needs. And remember that the psalmists were people who their devotion was clear, profound faith, and also they were facing situations like you and me, temptations, up and downs, roller coaster, you name it. But at the end, their faith in God, everything was resting in Him and the understanding that you and I are instruments that God is willing to use, is ready to use. The decision now is on our side. Amen. 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 So if our desire this year is to know God more and more, then our desire should be to study His Word. Because by studying the Word of God, we get to know Him more and more. And in this particular quarter, we have the privilege of studying the Book of Psalms. One of my favorite things about the Book of Psalms is the, is the how real you, know, you can feel the people that actually wrote this book. You know, when they are angry, you could feel the anger. When they are very happy, you could feel, wow, what's wrong here? <laughs> Did they just uh, got a lot of money? They get really excited. You could feel the excitement. You could feel the sadness. You could feel the warmness. You could feel their emotions. So my one of the takeaways as we begin to review the book of Psalms is God wants us to be real in our emotions. It's not going to spank us. Uh, when we we'll express our feelings. In fact, feelings are gifts from him so that we understand where we are. But at the end of it all, we're not driven by feelings. We need to understand, and that's why God has to be the center of everything. Our feelings should not be at the center of everything. So the book of Psalms is only God's center. So if you're reading the book of Psalms, and you are not seeing God, <laughs> or you are not learning something new about God, then I would say stop. Something is missing. Uh, I know as we're going to go through this lesson, one of the things I wrote in my uh, note is how not to use Psalms. Some people just go to the book of Psalms and just looking for something to say something to somebody that is negative. <laughs> there are some Psalms that can be very strong. Uh, but here, God has to be the center. And the good news is that we can trust and we should trust him at all times. Amen. And with that, we can jump into Sunday. The Psalms in ancient Israel's worship. So I hope you don't mind if I pick on some of you. So <laughs> if I don't know you by name, I'll just point at you. I'm sure we all have something to say. This is an interesting book because I'm sure each and every one of us has a favorite psalm. So you should be able to contribute in some manner or fashion today. So the psalms in ancient Israel's worship. What I found interesting here, uh, and we read this in 1 Chronicles 16 verse 7, it essentially shows how, they, how these psalms were formulated. And as you say, Brother Adi, the experience is real because these were people expressing their complaints, their tribulations, and their praise to God. And you wonder how a book where there seems to be a lot of complaining going on can still be a form of praise. And I think the crucial thing is that in each and every one of these psalmist experiences, God was the center. So when they struggled, they took it to God. <laughs> when they were happy, they took it to God. Their confession, everything is centered around worship and to God. And that is how it ends up being a book of praise, even in these various experiences. So First Chronicles 16 verse 7, essentially, okay, I'll read it here. It shows how David formulated one. Well, how one of these psalms was used in ancient Israel. 
And it reads, Then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. And then they read the psalm. So this is First Chronicles 16 verse 7. And the psalm co quoted here is Psalms 105. So it kind of shows how this was actually a part of their life, how during temple service, these psalms were being brought up, they were being utilized. And this psalm we have in First Chronicles 16 and 7 ends up being the psalm we see in Psalms 105. Thank, uh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk to you of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name. And it goes on and on. And that's something that kind of stood out to me and I found to be interesting. So here we're looking at how some of these psalms were used in ancient Israel. Uh, any comments, any additions? Any? Yeah, you guys have been very quiet, so it's time for you guys to participate now. How many books are in, in Psalms? How many chapters? How many books? Books? Okay. How many books? Okay. Huh? Five. Five. All right. So, um, and, and, and what is the center? of the Psalms, what, what's, what's the center? What's, what's the purpose of, of, of each one of them? Yes. My parents use it for different purpose. When we're scared, they tell us there's something to read. And some houses, you're gonna find a Bible open with Psalm 91. So when Psalm 91 open at the door, <laughs> the enemy cannot come. Yes. So uh, um, there was a lot of emphasis. Of if you pray at night, you memorize a psalm. If you're scared, you're going out at night time, it's dark. The psalms, it's, hey, go ahead, uh, uh, um, Psalm 23, go ahead, do this. So it, even the non-believer has a Bible. And I remember my sister has a friend every night. They open the Bible, put the Bible under the baby's head, and the babies go to sleep. Mm. And the baby cannot sleep at night if they remove the Bible. So we see that the Psalms has not, there's a lot of power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But for the non-believer, they believe, hey, if I open the Bible, mm -hmm. and I open it, Psalm 46, I put it right in front of my door, I will have peace. Yeah. So um, I truly believe the Psalms, the, the word of God has power. The psalm we're waiting in the different circumstances. And as growing up, I truly believe that when you um, read the psalms, you feel like peace. Mentally, I was able to go to sleep. When that time I'm outside, and I remember my mom would say, hey, if you do Psalm 91, you'll be okay. So go through it, and I'll be okay. Amen. Yes, yes. Actually, you know that, and thank you for that, um, Fredo, because... There's a lot of people that the first uh, verses in the Bible that they memorize is actually the Psalms, Psalm 23, the <laughs> 4. Actually, it, it says at the end that it helped you to sleep, right? So, and, and also Psalm 91, 120, 121, 86, 94. The, so all those Psalms are powerful, but, but that will tell you something. Uh, despite of the things that were done in the past, which they were indispensable part of the worship. And remember that they were used for the temple dedication. Remember that? Uh, they were also used for um, the processions. Uh, they were used for doing the setting down of the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem. They were used for many things. But one thing that I like and highlight is that it was also something important for us because it teach us how should you and I worship God. Amen. So I think we all need to go back to the Psalms and read it, now with a different perspective. I know that many people, were, I visited many houses and non-Adventist people, and I see that they always have, no, not all of them, but the majority of them have the Bible open in one Psalm. You know, I like, that's one of the key that I always teach people that when you're doing missionary work, that when you go to a house, you have to really observe and pay attention to every details. So I always look at that, and I always see in a corner 
they had the Bible open. So I tried to get close to that, and I always see, and they had a Psalms open. And I use that as a protection. And as was mentioned earlier, is some people use it as a first aid kit. Because if they are feeling sad or they go to, they open the Bible in the Psalm and they try to, and they're going to read it like that. It's, it's, it's good, but sometimes it's dangerous because you can take things out of the context. And, you know, and, and that can be dangerous. But, but the beauty of this is how rich and powerful these books are for us. And when we come to them with the understanding of what we're studying for this week, I think our perception and idea of what is this for is going to change completely. And we're going to be blessed when we come back to, to read every book of the Psalms. Amen. 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 Let me ask you a question here. How many of you have favorite Psalms? Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you which one. How many of you have favorite Psalm? How many? Okay. So for those of you, uh, maybe you have many, you just don't have favorite. Uh, this is a wonderful book. And if you have been reading Psalms before, I want to encourage you this quarter. Let's read it in a new way because we really want to look for God and make sure we find him and hear him speak to us as we read the book. Because I want us to go to Monday. Uh, I remember uh, as a young boy, I thought David wrote all the Psalms. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, because he probably wrote so many, I said, who's the author of the book of Psalms? David. I said, okay. <laughs> And then but as I started learning more, I realized, you know, God used so many people to write this wonderful book. Of course, David wrote so many. Uh, in our study today on Monday, it reminds us that as we meet the psalmist, these are, these are people like us. You know, uh, these are people like us, you know, I, I don't want to say this in a negative way, uh, but think of any emotions that you could feel. <laughs> Anger, uh, depression, think, think of anything. Uh, the psalmist, God in his own wisdom, put them together <laughs> so you could almost find your own kind of emotions. If you are the person that's always really happy and excited, you will meet some of your favorite psalmists there. And so our study this week reminds us that these people, again, inspired by the Holy Spirit. I think that's what makes the difference. Uh, if you go to the bookstore today, you can find many books, mm -hmm. okay, that were written by really smart people, okay, people, psychologists, some people that, you know, when you read their quotes, you say, wow. But I want us to understand the difference here. The difference is the book we are talking about here was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That makes a big difference. That means that when they were writing it, even though they did not know, they did not know that someday there will be a boy named Ademola that will benefit from it. They were just writing it. But their work has blessed so many people over the centuries. And that's why we need to remember it's not an ordinary book. It's something that was inspired. God used their talents, but we must always remember it was inspired by God. I'm going to read the, what we have. It says, let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of what? Troubles. And my life draws near to the grave. Does that sound like somebody that's really happy and excited? No, but somebody that was really seeking the face of God. And this same prayer, some of us can pray today. Some of us can say, this is exactly where I am today. And that's why a lot of time when we read the scriptures, especially when we read the Psalms, we suddenly find ourselves as, we, as if we are the author of these Psalms and we're feeling exactly what they are expressing in the book. And I hope meeting the Psalmists really help you to understand that they are people like us 
and God inspired them so they can bless us with their writings. Amen. Everyone's too quiet, so we'll start from here. <laughs> Anything to say? Um, yes. Any comments on Monday? Yes. We have a question here. So the songs are inspired by God. I think the, it's painting the reality that they were living back then. They're mm -hmm. telling the life story. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got scared. When I got scared, this is what I did. Yes. And when I'm worried, this is how I pray to God. Please, God, I'm worried. When I'm in the financial situations, that this is what I do. And I truly believe that um, God used them, but they're also facing those reality. It's not like a prophet who God tell them, hey, in the dream, you write this down. But like David, he faced those reality. He felt as lonely after he did what he did. He said, God, I come to you, confess all my sins. So us today, can we not write our own psalms in our own way as we're facing our different our challenges? Can we like use use David's experience, but however, put it in our con con concept today? The, f the thing we're facing today. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, one of the things that I like about the Psalms is the fact that it teaches us, uh, it teaches us that we can worship God in every season of life. When we're sad, when we are happy, when we're in trouble, when we have fear, when we're scared. It teaches something real, you know, down to earth. It's something that you and I will experience in life or experience in life, and, and we can reach out to that. And we can relate to everything that has been said in the Psalms. Because, I mean, it's a common thing. We all, I mean, it's the common denominator for humans that we all face fear, we all are afraid, we all get sick, we all have needs. But in every season of life, even you are young, young adult, adult, not that young, <laughs> or anything, you can still worship the Lord, and God will provide for each one of us. Yeah, and if that's I may the beauty add, of this. If I may add, to, 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 that's a very good question, I, and I want to share this. I remember the first time I had the privilege of preaching. I was so nervous, and I was praying. I said, God, I want to do your work. Help me to be able to share the message that you have given me. And I prayed, and I tried, and I prayed, and I preached, and I finished. And when I finished preaching, I felt even worse. And I went to this man, and I told him, I said, pray for me. I don't know what's wrong with me. And I told him my experience, and he just, he just smiled. He said, that's so normal. And he started sharing his experience with me. He said, that's the way it should be that you should not be full of yourself. And so it's like sharing this experience with me. So to your point, when we go through things and we share with people, we encourage them because it's real. And that's yeah. why sharing testimony should be a part of our Christian stewardship. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. And from that point of view, um, I think you come to realize that every single human experience is contained in the Bible. Whether we, and it's, I, I had a preacher say that the older he has grown, more and more he finds himself limiting the number of books he reads. It's, it's, it's like it's shrinking. Before he was interested in all these books, whether it's fictional work by Charles Dickens or Leo Tolstoy. and Because we feel that uh, they have something that the Bible doesn't have. But when you start to look at the Bible from this point of view and you find out that every human experience is embedded in this, right? It, you see how relevant it becomes to your walk as a Christian at every single point. Psalms 51, David has just sinned. He went in unto Bathsheba. He has remorse. He doesn't know what to do. He goes on to kill Uriah. And now he's confessing his sin. And he says what? 51. 
Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. This is a murderer speaking, right? So that's why I say like it, it encompasses every human experience you could imagine. And knowing that as we're speaking of um, on Monday, it's not just one person who was writing this, right? This is something that has always stood out to me when we speak of the Bible compared to, let's say, the Quran. Muhammad wrote the Quran, the Book of Mormon, okay, Joseph Smith. But how many authors were involved in formulating the Bible, right? God ultimately is the author, but every single, there's so many individuals who share their experiences and they infuse that into this book. And that's what makes it special. And so I feel that, as you say, they had these life experiences the same way you're having these life experiences. The only difference is, well, you lived 2,000 years after them. So mm-hmm. we have to wait <laughs> to see if there's another 2,000 years yes. for someone to write your book. But your life experience is in this book just as well. Amen. Because these people were like you and me. Amen. We have a couple oh, of here. Finally. <laughs> no, happy Sabbath, everybody. Amen. Well, uh, on that point, as you said it, it just simply says to us, and the question for the last part of the day's lessons how can we draw hope and comfort knowing that even faithful people, such as the psalmist, struggle with some of the same things that we do? So here we find that we too live the same life. But here is the hope that God can use any one of us exactly. to, re- to give. Him glory and amen. to bring others to Him. Amen, 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 amen. I have an experience, and let me try to do this really quick. <clears throat> and I was really young. I was in charge of a couple of churches, and I remember that we were having a crusade in the church, and they came to look for me, and they said, there's a problem outside. So I went outside, and there was a lot of young people surrounding a person that belongs to my church. And I, and I was thinking in my mind, why, why do they come to look for me, look for somebody else, do something else? But then I said, okay, here's the situation. So I went there, I got in the middle of the situation, and I, I talked to, there was a gang that came actually to kill one guy. Because this guy went to a pharmacy, uh, to, the, to a store, and he was talking to the cashier, the cashier was there, and 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 he she was the girlfriend of the gang leader and he didn't know he was just talking to her and somebody told him and he got mad he went to the church to kill this guy and when i went there i said what's going on here and one of the things that i keep in my mind was psalm 23 4 and i keep repeating that in my mind because i don't have the strength i couldn't fight 20 kids that were there with the intention of doing anything. But I went there and I talked to the guy. And one of the things that I did was, I don't know how that came from me. I said, give me the knife. He made a knife with the material of the plane, you know, the metal from the plane, that if they cut you, that won't heal pretty easy. I don't know how they got that. But I told the guy, give me the knife. I mean, I'm gonna ask you to please leave. And then he looked at everybody and he said, okay, guys, go. And he stayed with me, <clears throat> and we talked for a minute, and I prayed with him. And he looked at the guy and says, the only reason why you're going to continue living is because of him. He gave me the knife. I gave it to somebody else from his team, and I said, please take this away. And they left. When I came inside the church, I was shaking like uh, yellow. <laughs> And I just got in the front, and I, 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 I didn't talk to anybody until the end of the service. Because I was like, how in the world? <laughs> what, what I was doing there, they could kill me too. <laughs> Long story short, I met this guy in another occasion. Because I was preaching in their neighborhood. I had a, a new car. I drive that car to that place, and nothing never, ever happened to my car or to me even though there was some problem there. And I find out, because I had to go and, and pray for the father of this guy, that he told everybody, if you touch this guy or any of them, you're going to have trouble with me. <laughs> so just 
using the word of God, he made the impossible possible. To the end, that him and eight of the gang members got Bible study and all of them got baptized. So, you see, the, the word is powerful. Because when you see David saying all of this, this is not joke. This is real. He was struggling. He was shaking. He was in a difficulty that he said, you know, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I'm going to trust in you. So, and, and that's why it's written here so that we can learn from it. And the, I mean, in, in, in the intention is always there, but we need to trust that his power is real and available for you and I. And that's why I appreciate the question because we can all relay on this because we all have difficulties in life. Amen. On Tuesday, again, a song for every season. I'm just going to read some of these. If you read the Psalms, you'll see a lot about the majesty and the power of God. So if you're really reading some Psalms, you'll go, wow, this God is so powerful. It's majestic. There are so many Psalms about Thanksgiving uh, to show our appreciation to God. And there are psalms where you actually cry out. Uh, one of my favorite for that is Psalm 42. In fact, in Psalm 42, uh, Maschi was at writing, by the time you get to verse 3, he wrote, My tears have been my meat day and night. I mean, somebody cried so much that they said the cry has become their meal. <laughs> And they were saying that the Lord, they just needed the Lord. In fact, I got to a point, he has to say, God, where are you? Hmm. So those are really profound feelings that we find in the book of Psalms. And then we read some Psalms that hope on the way teaches us wisdom in terms of what we need to do and what we should stay away from. Very practical. And we see a lot of Psalms pointing to Christ, about how Christ is going to come and what he's going to do. And we're going to study this for the next 13 weeks. And so as we get into this, the main message on Tuesday is that we have Psalm for every season. It's not our design. It's God's design because he wants to take care of us in every season. Amen. A song for every season. Uh, I think this is the Pathfinder Creed, if I'm not mistaken, that says, keep a song in my heart. I'm not sure if it's the motto or the creed, but picture this. Back in Israel. First, I'll ask you this question. Do you know your mother's favorite hymn? I know my mom's favorite hymn because every time she'll be washing clothes, and back in the day, we didn't have washing machines, so she would do it by hand. She always used to sing this song. And I actually, I've never asked her this, but now I know it's a favorite hymn because the song stuck in my head. It was Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Now, back in the days of Israel, what songs were they singing? It's this book. It's the book of Psalms. Now, picture from that point of view where they didn't have the collection of songs we have. This was their hymnal. So let's say a lady was by the riverside washing clothes. Yeah. She might have been singing Psalms 125. Mm -hmm. They that trust in the Lord are as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abideth forever. With the hymn, with the melody to it or a tune. I don't know what the melody or tune is, mm -hmm. but I remember you telling me, Brother Adi, how when you went to Israel, you were moved by how they would read the word mm -hmm. and they would have the melody, melody. to it. And so this is happening back in the days of Israel where someone is singing by the side of the river washing clothes. And this is their hymnal, right? Where that Psalms 91, as Fredo said, for protection, right? They that try, um, a thousand shall fall at their right hand side, 10,000 at their left hand side, but it shall not come nigh thee. So these are the songs they were singing. And I think when you, when you visualize it that way, the book really comes alive. So this was their hymn book. The way I like some uh, hymn now, 625. I'm pressing on the upward way. This was what they were singing back in the day. 
So we've had a comment from here. We haven't had any comments from here. So I'm going to pick on someone. Sister Aline, you will forgive me afterwards. But I'm sure you have something insightful to share on the book of Psalms and anything on Tuesday. Mm, not, so much on, not so much on Tuesday, but I okay. did have an experience many years ago. Um, and the Psalms came out of it, Psalm 124. My children and I had gone to my mother-in-law's home for, I think it was Thanksgiving dinner. And when we were on the freeway, just a couple of minutes from the house, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me a question. How would you react if someone broke into your home? Hmm. And I said, in my thinking, I don't know. How am I supposed to react? And he said, you remain calm. Now, the, the side door of my house, which we went in and out of, had a steel gate. You know, the wrought iron bars, right? Yep. With the key lock. It was open. And the door was open. And I remained calm. And went through the house. Nothing was taken. Nothing was disturbed. And I went with my oldest daughter at the time, because the baby was an infant. And we kneeled and we prayed. I opened up to the book of Psalms, 124. And it says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, mm -hmm. now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Mm. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, who had not given us, us who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Yes. Amen. 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 Thanks amen. for sharing. Amen, amen. Thank you. God is good. good. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any comment or any question? <clears throat> if not, I, before we get away from Tuesday, I, I, I don't want to pass in the opportunity for you to go back and read the part when you explain about the parallelism, imaginary use of the figurative language, um, and all that, because that is essential for us to understand keywords that were used in the Psalms. Those will help us to understand, you know, we have examples here, like for example, when it says here, the shadow of the of, of his winds, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, you will understand. Uh, like for example, a, a bird, why do they use their wings for? I mean, what? For what? For protection. They protect their, their, their babies, right? Uh, and, and also, what else? To fly. And you, you see that some of them, are, you use them and they go, they fly really high. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, you can find another example when it says here, I have cried day and night before thee. Have you cried day and night? Have you ever cried day and night? Is that, is that something that you think happened early? Like he cried all day and night? Or he was more speaking about the condition of his heart? Uh, the way that he was feeling. So I want you to go back and read that and, and keep it in mind because when you go back and read the Psalms, you will understand so many things that will help you also to deep into the Word of God. And now because of the sake of time, let's go to Wednesday. And we're going to see here inspired prayers. One of the things that I love about the Psalms is that they are full of prayers and praises. Mm -hmm. And it, all of them are in the Word of God, in the form of uh, uh, prayers and praises of belief. And I want to highlight, I want you to read with me here what is in, in the yellow here highlighted. Please read this with me. It says this, like wise the Spirit, Spirit also help in our what? Weakness. Say it. In our what? Weakness. Weakness. Please keep that in mind. For we do not know what we should pray for as we 
But he says that the Spirit himself, himself make intercessions for us with what? Which cannot be now. He who the what? What does it say? Knows what the mind of the Spirit is. And what does it say? Because he makes what? For the what? According to the... How many of you have used the Psalms to intercede for somebody else? To intercede in prayer for somebody else, for somebody that is sick. Well, the key is here. And this will help us to understand more and to deep dive into what the purpose of all interceding also and praying for other people. This is going to help us more. Amen. Let's move on. Amen. Amen. Uh, in fact, some, one of my favorite psalms for prayer is Psalm 130. Uh, and it says, Heart of the devs. Have I cried unto thee, O Lord? You know, this psalm reminds us that when we want to cry, we cry unto the Lord uh, first. You know, Lord, hear my voice. Let thy ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. And it goes on and goes on and goes on. It talks about prayer for forgiveness, prayer for... You know, one thing that you will notice in the psalms, if you read the psalms a lot, is you won't see the psalms all the time praying for material things. Take, take note of that. You know, there will be prayers for material blessings, but a lot of times it's actually for the peace of God, for restoration, for protection, for things that are more on the things that will last long, not things that are on the trivial side. But there are times there are prayers for blessings, like in material things. And so when we think about Wednesday, it says, as you read these Psalms, you will find them expressing hope, praise, fear, anger, sadness, <laughs> sorrow. Do they sound familiar with us? <laughs> Things yeah. that people everywhere, in every mm -hmm. age, no matter their circumstances, Thanks. face. So the book of Psalms is not a book for those who are just in good health, no, it's for people in good health, people that are not in good health. It doesn't really matter where you are, there will be something for you in the book of Psalms. And one thing that you mentioned that, that I like is, it's not always telling you everything is gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. You're gonna be okay. Yes, everything is fine. No. no. You face the reality of anger, you face the reality of our condition, but he always gives us the way to go to the Father. Amen. Amen. And, and some, sometimes, you know, uh, again, when I first became a Christian, I wonder why some things are actually in the Bible. I would say, why would God allow somebody who questioned whether he exists? He say, where are you, God? Well, why wasn't that taken out of the Bible? So it doesn't look bad. No. But the more you read it, the more you actually realize that this is our real raw emotions. Mm -hmm. And God wants everything in there so we can see how he responds. Uh, to our situation. And I praise God because uh, this is a wonderful book. So if you have not been reading the book of Psalms, we're encouraging you this quarter to do so. Amen. They speak to us all in the language of our own experiences. And it's pertinent and I guess striking to also note how Christ also used the Psalms. I imagine, uh, I think Desire of Ages speaks of how Christ will be up at four in the morning praying and singing. And I can only suppose that the Psalms would have been on his lips as well. So for this year, I ask us all to take on the challenge of learning a psalm by heart. The way we always have a song in our heart, that can be a psalm as well. Um, with that, we can move on to Thursday. Okay, the world of the Psalms. The world of the Psalms is wholly God-centered. It seeks to submit in prayer and praise all life experiences to God. 
So since we're moving in order, we've gone through this column. We're here now. Um, actually, we haven't had anyone from this site. So any comments on the sums? It can be a personal experience. It does not necessarily have to touch on Thursday. But anyone from the far right column um, to share something? Sister Ben. <coughs> As a convert, I was raised to um, do the Holy Rosary almost every day. And then you have the weekly novena mm -hmm. that you read over and over. And it was really very hard to detach from that routine yes. that you feel closer to the Lord with the beads of the rosary each day. And so with even all the members of the family would gather. But with this... Um, opening the Bible and cut it in the middle. You see the Psalms, and just like um, Brother Adi had mentioned too on what was written a while ago, that you see everything, the hope, the praise, the fear, the anger, the sadness, and it's just beautiful, and I just want to share it for those who are also experiencing how it was hard for me to get out of that habit, that the book of Psalms, you will see see a lot and experience a lot of things that you want to sing praises to God. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Beth. Anyone else? <clears throat> Anyone else on, on Thursday? You see there how is highlight that God is the creator, he is the king, the judge of all earth, and that he provides all things to, for his children. Any comment? There for Thursday. Or question. Oh, can I chime in if no one will? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So there's also prophecy in the book of Psalms. And that's something I think we'll touch on as the weeks go by. And the prophecy is pointing to Christ. And I found this to be very beautiful. When you see some of the prophecies speaking of Christ's passion, the passion of the Christ and his suffering. Psalms 22 from verse 12. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around about. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue cleaver to my jaws. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And this is prophesying of the suffering of Christ um, that we, we know very well from the Synoptic Gospel. So there's a lot embedded in the book. It, it seems to have so much depth and richness to it in, in what it speaks to. And as Thursday says, ultimately at the center of the book is God. It's very God-centered. Amen. 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 Uh, can you can you go with me to your lesson on Thursday? And let's go to this. I think is the last paragraph there and when he says the psalmist understood. Are you there? Are you there with me? Okay. Let's read that. He said there. Listen to this. He says the psalmist understood the dynamics of the spiritual tension. What is he talking about here? What is the spiritual tension? Because it says there, there, their awareness of God, goodness, and presence amid whatever they were experiencing is what strengthened their hope while they wait for God to what? To intervene. However, and whenever he chooses to do so. So what is this telling us? Because I mean, you... You and I, we are still in the process of growing. Amen? Amen. I hope you are like me. We, we still need to grow spiritually. But what, is, what does this mean to us? I mean, the thing that I see here is that when we are in this spiritual tension, we'll still need to weigh on him 
despite on the time that he take to do what he's going to do. No human intervention. No weird things. Don't go and find ways of looking for things that can help you there because God is real. He understand. He will provide. He will be there. He still listen. He is present and he will do according to his will in his time, not our time. So the psalmist understood this. And he want us to understand that because it's not just a matter of fast food. This is real business. Because at the end what he wants is your salvation, my salvation, eternal life. He wants our transformation and he wants real true and powerful spiritual growth for you and for me. And this is talking about in a personal level, but it's also talking about in our spiritual level as we worship together in his church as a community of believers. That when we come here together to worship God, we are also exposed to that environment. Amen. And we will receive his blessing in many ways, in songs as we have said before, in 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 prayer as we come together in, in, in the word of God, as we study his word, and in many other ways. We have one, one hand here too. That is why <clears throat> church worship is very important. The gathering of the saints is very important because when we are here gathered together, like what, when we study the, the lesson study, when we listen to the program in Sabbath school, that has uh, impact in our spiritual life. You, we don't know what had happened that week in your life, but once we come here in church, the praises, as you were saying a while ago, which is really the, one of the themes of the book of Psalms, the praises of God's people lift us up from what we have been so tense. Amen. Any tensions that we have experienced that week, it gives us a sigh of relief, an emotional uh, uh, bond that will lift us up in a higher level of our Christian experience. And, and so when, when we look at, it's not only the book of Psalms, when we look at all of God's promises in the Bible, and there's a lot of promises in the Bible. One of those is what you read a while ago, the suffering of Christ when he came here to bear our, our sins at Calvary's cross. And as you have said, the psalmist understood those spiritual dynamics. The only problem with the Jewish people is when they were thinking of the release from any kind of trouble and problem. They were look, looking for a warrior king. That's why when Christ came, as a fulfillment of what uh, Micah read, they didn't accept that mission for him to come and save them from their sins. They were thinking that the Messiah that is spoken in the Old Testament prophets is a warrior king that will deliver them from the uh, slavery of, of, from Rome. And if we got a lesson, if we'll take a lesson from out of that, we may, we may be looking at a complete deliverance now, yeah. but still partial. That's why the coming of Christ is called the blessed hope, because that will be the end of the tensions that we are experiencing. But in the meantime, in the meantime, when we come to those tensions in life, we look forward for those, we, we trust on those promises that is spoken even in the book of Psalms, because that gives us the thrill, the joy, the, 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 the strengthening of our faith, that come what may, we still would praise and serve the Lord. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for that. We have one more hand there. We have we one there. And then one to Friday. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, the book of Psalms reminded us um, God promises to all of us. When we are sad, say, I will be with you always. Amen. When you're scary, God say, hey, I will give you comfort. When you're going mm -hmm. through something, uh, you lost a family member, say, hey, I will never leave you alone. I will be by your side. The book of Psalms reminded us of all God's promises. Whatever we're going through, 
he has prepared something for us. And when you read the Psalms, that gives you hope, comfort. And when the enemy comes before you, say, hey, I, the enemy will not, I will not give my glory to the enemy. I'm a God mm -hmm. who loves you, and I will be with you always. Mm -hmm. So Psalms reminded us of God's promises to all of us. Amen. 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 We have my sister in the back. And another hand there. That's okay. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. The last two questions on Thursday is how can Psalms help us understand that we cannot limit God to certain aspects of our existence only? And then the second question is, what might be the parts of your life in which you are seeking to keep the Lord at a distance? I see. The Psalms helps us to recognize that God's presence is inescapable. Whether we acknowledge it or not, mm -hmm. Psalms 24 says the earth is the Lord and everything in it and the world and all who live in it. Mm -hmm. Inescapable. Psalms 139 and 8 if I ascend up to into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Inescapable. Our God is inescapable. My prayer, and I wrote it, Father, help me to open up every aspect of my life so that you get all the praise and the glory, no matter what the circumstance. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. As as the psalm comes alive in our hearts and what all of us just said, the servant of the Lord reminds us that and she made a parallel with the children of Israel that how they responded, their praise, their reaction. She says, Many of the surrounding people, beholding the prosperity of Israel, were led to think favorably of Israel's God who had done such great things for his people. Mm. So how we respond, what the psalm means to us, what the word of God means to us, is a testimony for the persons looking on. Yes. So we must, as we absorb the psalm, it must come alive in our hearts and Amen. remember that others are Amen. looking to see God in us. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank you. Good so way to uh, conclude the, the Thursday. Let's go to Friday now. Let's go to Friday. Uh, as we go to Friday, I don't want to forget this, please. I have a psalm for you. Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go away into the house of the Lord. Amen. So when you come next Sabbath, come with gladness. That's a psalm for you. And let our attitude always be that when we go to the house of the Lord, we go with gladness. Amen. Final thoughts. Number one, the Holy Spirit inspired the psalmist and use their talents in service to God and to their community of faith. They were people of genuine devotion and profound faith, and yet prone to discouragements, temptations, as are the rest of us. Number two, the Psalms make the believing community aware of the full range of human experience. They demonstrate that believers can worship God in every season in life. Amen. And I'd like to leave you with this psalm as well, Psalm 55, verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he will hear my voice. I hope that's a commitment you can make for this year. As you read the psalms, you will find them expressing hope, praise, fear, anger, sadness, and sorrow. Things that people everywhere in every age, no matter their circumstances, face. They speak to us all in the language of our own experiences. And number four, God is a sovereign creator, the king and judge of all the earth. He provides all things for his children. Therefore, he is to be trusted at all times. Amen, amen. And number five, this is our commitment for today. So I'm going to ask you to please stand up with me as we prepare our heart for the prayer and the commitment for today. The commitment is very simple. 
<laughs> but it's really deep. Because we're asking all of us to pray that we can put God at the center of everything. And everything means everything. All the struggles we learn, fears, sadness, joy, you name it. We need to put God at the center of everything. Now, brother, Ali, can you please pray for us as we conclude? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the inspired words from the book of Psalms. This wonderful book has blessed so many people. And we are here today testifying that we have been blessed reading and studying your word. And as we start this journey, this quarter, looking into the book one more time, we pray, Lord, that our commitment will be real because we want Amen. you to be at the center of everything. Lord, in all the ways that we have been trying to keep some things away from you, we've been trying to handle some things because we feel we're really good at those areas. We just don't want you to get involved. Lord, please touch our hearts today. Pray that we oh, open our hearts to you and allow you to come in and be the one that directs the affairs of our lives. And Lord, help us to be real in our relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for this new journey that we're starting. And thank you, Lord, for you're the one that's always ministering to us as we come together to study at your feet. We praise you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And we invite you to continue studying. Next week we're going to study, uh, talk about, teach us to pray. Amen. That's going to be very interesting. So God bless you and have a blessed rest of the week. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Uh, so how did you guys enjoy our Sabbath school today? All right, so uh, our new team member for Sabbath School will actually have uh, something to say for uh, as an announcement. Uh, I'd like to call Don up. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dwayne. Uh, blessings and happy Sabbath to everyone. So in behalf of the Sabbath School Department, uh, myself, Memory, and Dwayne, we're inviting you early next Sabbath to Sabbath school at 9 a.m. So we will be serving breakfast in church. So we invite you to invite your friends, especially if you have a non-Adventist friends, to join us in our Sabbath school at 9 a.m. So we will have a photo shoot courtesy of Brother Harty Sarsosa. So we'll have a photo shoot per family. And we will have potentially a live music as we enjoy breakfast and fellowship with each other. So we hope to see you there next Sabbath. What time? 9 a.m. And this is part of our kickstart program for the year to promote our Sabbath school. So our department with the leadership of memory, we have an exciting programs lined up for this year. And we only not ask you to, to come early, but we ask you to participate, be engaged, and involved in the program so that we can grow together as we wait for the Lord. So next Sabbath, please come early, 9 a.m. So thank you so much. Oh, before I sit down, uh, we're trying to map all the people that attend our church. And I'm going to pass this uh, sign-up sheet to put your name, uh, email, and cell number. So we ask you to provide us with your contact information. You don't have to be a member of our church, but if you can uh, put your contact information, because we wanted to know you more, especially for this year. So please fill up these forms. Thank you. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. How is everybody doing? Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord? I'm blessed. And especially because I see smiles from you and that make me feel happy. So welcome to Metropolitan SDA Church. And I would like to welcome each one of you Metropolitan Way. So why don't we all stand up and go around and say happy Sabbath and greet each other. Especially see and look for new faces and uh, make them feel welcome. 
Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to start today uh, with the announcement, uh, especially giving thanks to all of you as part of our church for being here yesterday during the, our Sister Elita uh, celebration of life. And also from Brother Joe and the rest of the family, they want to thank everybody for everything that you did. You know um, how much we love her and the family, so they really appreciate uh, everything that was done. Uh, we have a couple announcements. Number one, continue to pray for the Pathfinder and the youth. They are in locked in this weekend. From yesterday, today, and tomorrow, they are in Porter. Uh, I was there last night, and it was, it was, it was fun to see all of them <laughs> Um, together. They have a lot of activities. I also got a text earlier to this morning from Jenny. It was 7 a.m. They said, we are ready for a, we're going to go for a hiking. It was 40 degrees. They said, oh, let's have fun. That's going to be a good one for them. So they're, they're having a lot of fun. The spiritual part also is it's part of it. So continue to pray for, for all of them and that when they come back, it's like coming back from the mountains as they also seek uh, the face of God. Um, we are. We have communion service. Put it in your calendar. Write it down in your phone. Communion service, January twenty. Okay. So put in your in your calendar, January twenty. We're gonna have our first communion service of the year. Uh, it was moved as a movie because so that way the youth, the young people, can go and do the lock in, and they can also be back and participate during this uh, First Communion service for the year. This uh, Sunday, January 14, at 10 a.m., this is for all the leaders of the church. Sunday, January 14, at 10 a.m., we're going to have our annual virtual office training via Zoom. Uh, this is uh, the community service, the cleric, uh, the church ministry, uh, communication, men's ministry, prayer ministry, the Sabbath school, and the youth ministry. If you need more information for the Zoom, you can also go to the Southwest Regional Conference website, and you can find the information there. We can also, we'll send it over to you so that you can uh, keep it with you. And if the schedule of work or anything permit, you can be there uh, that Sunday. This is coming from our conference. Um, also, uh, there is a, uh, let me just not forget this. This, this announcement is coming from the, uh, adventure department. It says there, uh, the adventure registration for the year 2024 starts now and is going to end January the 20th. These are for the kids ages from four to nine years old during registration, okay? Four to nine during registration. The registration fee is only $25 for adventures. The forms are available out there. You can go and grab one and you can give it to uh, Wilma. Uh, this is the... Uh, she's the adventures director um, and uh, do that. ASAP so that your kids can also be part of this. Today, after uh, worship and after potluck, we have a business meeting. All church members, uh, 
are invited to this business meeting. All church members are invited to this business meeting. And then after that, we also have a special training um, the pastor has prepared for all of us. So please stay behind, stay with us, and we and be blessed as we also um, uh, gather together. We have one more announcement. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Uh, my name is Hannah. I, um, I'm here on behalf of the uh, prayer ministry department. Um, we are planning to join our church, our worldwide church, in this 10 days of prayer. Um, as of last night when Pastor um, uh, told us that the women's ministry are also holding the 10 days of prayer, I have decided that we as a church will um, join them. Um, our, we are going to um, pray together in unity and the um, the topic or uh, the theme for this year is priorities of faith. So if you have found yourself um, tired, I mean, it's only, this is the first Sabbath of the year, right? Um, and if you if your schedule's already been so busy, um, I would like to invite you um, to carve out some time, 10 days for the Lord um, as we seek him um, in prayer. And I would like to encourage you if you are unable to attend um, it will be 7.30 p.m. Uh, I believe it's via Zoom. Yeah, via Zoom. But we don't. I don't have the link yet. Um, they do have a website where you can register. It's um, 10daysofprayer2024.eventbrite.com. Um, and once I get the information, if you're unable, I will be sure to post that on our Metropolitan page as well. So if you're unable to register through here, um, be sure to follow us at Metropolitan Seventh-day Adventist Facebook page. Um, we will be posting it there. Um, once again, I would like to encourage you, if you are unable to t attend at this time, to just have an individual um, commitment to pray for this uh, 10 days. Thank you. I don't know if you were able to observe <coughs> this card that is being posted in our bulletin, but if not, then I would like to, because I told Sister er, uh, Sister Michelle to verbalize it in front. Her thanksgiving to every one of us. He says here, Elder Baisa, elders, and Sister Beth, and the Metro, the Metro family, thank you for your prayers and thoughts during our loss, Sister Michelle, and would you mind standing, Sister Michelle, so that they will know who our, yeah. And she has been a new member of our church, right? Yeah, just transferred her membership with us here in Metro. So, yes, we still continue to pray for uh, your bereaved family. Because in, 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 as a church, as a community of believers, prayer can make a difference in the life of anyone. So thank you for your thoughtfulness also giving us this card. Just a quick announcement, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just asking all the Sabbath school teachers from um, beginner, kinder, primary, juniors, um, for us to have a meeting at, in the baby room during lunch. So potluck, get your food, and we're going to meet so that we can um, have a plan for our um, uh, schedule for our teachers and for the children's ministries program for this year. Thank you. Right, amen. So you are being warned. <laughs> and uh, thank you for paying attention to all the announcements. Now for the call to worship. I would like you to please stand up with me. <clears throat> this is a special time. This is a special day for all of us. There's no accident on this. When you accept the calling of the Holy Spirit to come and worship His name, Remember that this time is it's not about us, but it's about Him. But the extension of His power is focused on you. Because you came here today, maybe with a need, maybe with a question. And you came to the right place. Because I have faith that God is going to manifest His power and give you peace. So as we prepare our heart, as we prepare our mind for worship, remember that He is among us today. So let you and I bring 
everything to the feet of Jesus. Close your eyes, prepare your heart. You can ask pastors to come here and pray for us as we consecrate our mind and heart to be ready for worship. Our most gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, indeed, we are here as your people because of so many things that we would like to thank you. Looking back in year 2023, we have a lot of challenges, but your bountiful blessings, your uh, word had encouraged us so much. And so today as we start this new year in this first Sabbath worship that we have, that we can give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for who you are to us and what you have done for each one of us. And we look forward for a fruitful year, 2024, because as you have been with us in the past, you are still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we bring our worship to you, not because we are worthy, but in the merit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as, as we invoke your holy presence in our midst, we are also encouraged that you dwell in the midst of the praises of your own people. We bring all of our cares to you then, Father, because you know what is best for us. And as we worship you in the beauty of holiness, may all of us, at this point in time in our worship, center our thoughts to the one who is seated on the throne and he is always in control in the affairs of man and nation. That will help us find and, and feel a glimpse of your power, of your majesty, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings again and blessings, dear family and friends. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year. Um, it's always a delight to come to church early. And I tried to come into church in a stealth mode. And suddenly, I, I was caught by my dear friend, Pastor Hansel. And he asked me if I can do the tithes and offering. And I said with a smile, yes. And I think as we embark into this new year, our department would like to invest on people and hopefully next time when we approach individuals like Pastor Hansel to help us with the Sabbath school, his family to help us with the Sabbath school, or our community service department needs help, then he can also reciprocate with a big resounding sound, yes. Okay. So anyways, open your Bible to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. And this will be our short reading for tithes and offerings. Proverbs chapter 3. So this verse or this chapter opens with a wonderful promise from the Lord which provides great blessing that equates to giving. So Proverbs chapter 3 and it opens with this wonderful reminder which is relevant for us this new year. It says, My son, do not forget my teaching. Son, that's us. But keep my commands in your heart. At least a great verse that we can uh, reflect this new year because the next verse after verse 1 explains why we have to keep that teaching from the Lord. Because in verse 2, it tells us, for if we keep that reminder in our hearts, we will prolong your life many years or he will prolong our life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Who doesn't want peace and prosperity, right? It's one of the great blessings that we can have in life. Then in chapter, um, in chapter 9, verse 
3, it further tells us that let love and faithfulness never leave you, bind them around your neck, write them on your tablet of your heart. So that is how important this promise that God is telling us. Because as such, if we follow this command, in the next verse, it tells us that we will win, that you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And after that, finally, we are reminded to, in verse 5, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. You can reflect on this verse and get inspiration about trusting God with all our finances, especially in 2024. Just like the widow of Zarephath who trusted with all her life that he gave what he has or what they have and God had blessed their family and they survived the great famine. And in chapter 9, which is, I wanted to underscore, honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of your crops. So this relates now to our giving, uh, honoring the Lord with our earnings, with the income that we receive, that we bring to our household. Because if we do so, your barns, which is our household, will be filled to overflowing, and your vats or these containers will bring will brim over with the new wine. So overflowing blessings will come into our home or into our household. So we are still early this year to reflect on what God has done in our life with your family, with our health, and with our career in the past year, 2023. And you will, you will realize how blessed you are, that you are still alive, full of health, and with many blessings, with love and blessings from your family. Brothers and sisters, we can never outgive the Lord. And because he owns everything, including our life and our worldly possessions, which in the end we will abandon when we depart in this world or when our life chapter ends. So let us give generously uh, today for our tithes and offerings so that we can support his ministry and we can hasten uh, his return so that we can meet with him and join him to live in that, in that eternal home that he has prepared for us. So let us uh, pray, I guess, before we collect our tithes and offering. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of finances that you entrusted to each of us in our family. We pray, dear Lord, that we will be faithful and we will keep that promise that you have said in Proverbs chapter 3 so that you will bless us abundantly so, so that we can help and support your mission. Bless this money that we are about to collect and may it touch more people, especially the needy, so that they can hear more about you and you can come soon. This we ask, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Oh, 
Have you guys climbed a tree before? Yes. Yeah? Yes. You tried? Okay. How tall was the tree? Bending down. Do you guys know anybody in the Bible who climbed a tree? Zacchaeus. Do you guys know the story of Zacchaeus? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Well, what was Zacchaeus? What was his job? Tax collector. Now, tax collectors back then. They weren't very honest people, right? So they tended to steal. Sometimes they would charge people for money, and then they would charge it more than what they were actually needed to. And then the extra money they kept. Is that good or bad? Bad, right? So Zacchaeus lived in Jericho. And that day, Jesus was walking through the city of Jericho. Everybody already knew who Jesus was. He was a very famous person. Uh, he was a healer and a, and a teacher, right? So Zacchaeus, along with everybody else, wanted to see him, right? So what he did was climb a super tall tree and tried to see him. Then what did, what did Jesus do? Do you guys know? Yeah, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus and said what? He said, Zacchaeus, come down from there. I'm going to your house today, right? Yeah. And then what happened? Do you guys know what happened? He went, Jesus went to his house. Yeah, Jesus went to his house. And then at his house, Zac yeah, they had a meal. Zacchaeus ran over to the house after he climbed down the tree. And then he said to his servants and everybody in the house, he said, everybody, we have to get ready because Jesus is coming, right? So then they prepared a meal. And then when Jesus came over, he said, Zacchaeus, no, he, sorry. Zacchaeus said that he was going to uh, do half of his profits to him. I give half of it to the poor because of all the money he cheated. So he gave half of his money to the poor. And then Jesus said, okay. <laughs> so he said that uh, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. This meant that he had for, that Jesus had forgiven his sins, and even though people didn't think Zacchaeus was good because he was a tax collector, people didn't like him. God loved him. God still loved him, so he knew his heart was good. The last part of what Jesus said that he came to seek and save the lost is the reason why God sent his Son to come to Earth to find those who didn't know God and were lost, and to show them who God is, so they could live forever in heaven with him. Can, can you guys mem uh, memorize a memory verse with me? Okay, repeat after me. Psalm 51, 10. God, create a pure heart in me. Give me a new spirit that is faithful to you. Psalm 51, 10. Okay, who wants to pray? Okay, we'll choose one boy, one girl. Yeah, that one, and then a girl over here. Oh, oh. Anybody? It was a girl. Why are you here? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, we'll have three players. Yeah, right. Dear God, thank you, day. Thank you, buddy. It's my teacher. I'm to be like Jesus. Amen.
Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Bless everyone in this church. And now pray. Amen. Jesus' name, pray. Let's pray. Let the food when we eat. And thank you, Jesus, for saving us. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. So we always make a point of emphasizing that we are not singers. We are just people who love Jesus, just Amen. like you. And so with that, I'll ask you all to stand up with us as we sing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Save me. 
Praise the Lord. This is a new year. New challenges. One of the things that happen is that every year the calendar start from day one. But your problems on Mark continue to be the same one. Our struggles continue to be the same one. But I praise God because we have Him. Amen. And in Him, we can start from zero. Amen? I didn't want to say this earlier as we were doing the Sabbath school because I wanted to say it now. But one of my favorite songs is... 135, verse 5 and 6. Can you look it up with me, please? Psalm 135, verse 5 and 6. And I want you to read it with me because I think this is special for us. I want all of us to recognize what verse 5 says. He says there, and I want you to read it with me, please. He says, that, for I know, can you say that? For I know, say I know, that the Lord is great, amen, and that our Lord is above all God, amen, say that, our God is above all God, say our God is above all problems, say our God is above any situation that we can face in life. And now look what the verse 6 says. Whatsoever the Lord please that did he in heaven and in earth, in the sea and all the places. And I'm going to say amen. Whatever my father pleases in me, with me, for me, he will do it. And he had no limits on the earth, anywhere you go. God will be there. That's why I said that we need to come to Jesus. We need to come to God daily. Every plan, any situation in life, trust in God. Remember that He is above everything. That our God is great. That He is powerful. That He is present. And He never changed. That's why today as we come and dedicate our life before Him in prayer, I want to ask if there is anyone among us that has special prayer for today. If that is you, please raise your hand. If that is you, I want to pray for you. And we are going to pray together. There's nothing different for you to stay there or to come here. But if you want to come here, I want to invite you to come. Let's come together. 
and let's pray. I invite you to come here to the front. There's nothing special. There's nothing different. There's nothing magical. Because as we read here, the power comes from our Lord. Our God is great. Our God is wonderful. He's above all God. Whatever He pleases, He will do in you. So have faith in Him. As we come together in prayer today, let's get on our knees. But keep in your mind, start with the attitude of faith and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know my struggle. God, you know my needs. You know my physical, emotional, spiritual, financial needs. And we come before you today, Lord, in a demonstration of faith. When we got on our knees today, at this moment, in this place, on our seat or here at front, is a demonstration that we trust and have faith in you. And we come before you today, Lord, asking you that you can search our heart and that you can, in your will, in your time, that you can have mercy on us. There might be somebody at this place, Lord, that is in physical need. They need your power. We need your power. We need you to come by us today and touch us, touch our body. Touch that thing that is hurting us, that is bothering us. Maybe somebody is sick, Lord. You are the almighty God. You are the powerful God. As we read, you are great. There's nothing as Jeremiah 32 says, there's nothing impossible for you. So we trust you, Father, at this moment that you can touch our bodies, that you can restore our health, that you can restore our emotional being, that if there are anybody here that has a question in their mind, that had that doubts, that they can go back to their homes restored and filled with your spirit. Let this experience today be a wonderful one, a restoration and a demonstration of your power and that can people can see that we have been in front of you. Father, we pray for every member. We pray for every children, for young people. They have challenges in life. They have a lot of decisions to make. We pray that you will help them to grow spiritually. We, help, we pray that you will manifest your power upon them, that you will reveal to them, that they can feel your presence, that they can see you, so that they can rededicate their life to you, and we can see miracles and testimony of your power. We ask, Lord, for also for the parents, for the families. We ask for every leader of this church. We present to you our life at this moment, and we ask that you will fill us with your presence. Let this moment be special. It's not about our words. It's not about what we say, but it is about you, because you know us. We're here because of you. We're here because we accept the invitation of your Holy Spirit to come to worship you. So, Father, remove the veil that are in our eyes so that we can see you. Remove whatever is covering our ears so that we can hear your voice. Remove the sensitivity of our body so that we can feel your presence. And remove, Father, what is blocking our spiritual experience to be real so that we can be renewed in your presence today. So that we can say, Lord, we have been in front of you. We can, we can feel you. We can hear you. We can see that you are among us today. This is a new year, Father. There might be challenges, but help us to trust in you every day. There might be difficulties, but let us walk with you always. Trust in you every day. Let us have 
a real experience of life, walking in faith in you so that we can show to the world that you are a true God. And today, Father, as we worship your name, we want to present ourselves before you as a living sacrifice so that you can give us the things that you, you desire in your heart for salvation in each one of us. So at the end of this worship service, our life will be the same. As we go back to reality and go back to our world, back to work, back to home, back to this life, that now we're going to have a walk of faith as we know that you are on our side and you already give us victory. And when you come in the class of heaven, Father, that our names will be written in the book of life and that we can go home to live with you forever. We ask all of this, not because we're worth it, but because of the one that died in the cross, our Jesus, our Savior, and our Lord. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.
Sabbath, George. Open your Bibles to First Peter 2, verse 5 and 9. Please stand for the Word of God. You yourselves, like being stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous sight. You may be seated. Wow. Still, uh, we have a lot of our members, <clears throat> visitors coming to worship with us. A lot of our young people are in Porter for a lock in and uh, we are still happy that we have you here to join us in our worship and to those that are joining us live stream we extend our greetings for the first sabbath of year 2024 that we can experience god in a mighty way as we study god's word today our uh First Sabbath of every quarter is fasting and prayer. And since it's the first Sabbath of uh, the quarter, we thought of having uh, a communion service. But because of our children that are in the clock, in, we, I postponed that for the 20th. But we will still have the consecration service as a church before i'm doing it for officers but i said to myself why just the officers to be consecrated it must all be the members so we have this church consecration service and since it is also the first sabbath of the quarter we'll be having our own church board or our church officers and you that are not officers of the church, members of our church, to be attending the business meeting so that we can also make some programs and planning for year 2024, probably even just three months or the whole year or just six months, six months. And we will have it as a matter of prayer to the Lord that year 2024 would be different from year 2023. Amen. And we'll be having a seminar, and the seminar is centered to all of us. It's about you, the church, me, the body of Jesus Christ, and the invisible head of the church, the, the, the Savior in our Lord Jesus Christ. So after potluck, come by here. Whether you be a member of our church, you are invited to this uh, seminar because it's speaking about the ecclesia the community of believers, so that we can really make 2024 uh, a, a better than year 2023. And uh, probably it's a three-part series or it's a four-part series. So every time I'll be here, or probably uh, I may leave the other church uh, and then I'll just continue on here. In the afternoon, we'll be having a seminar. But uh, the first Sabbath, on the second Sabbath also will be for our sister church. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be having the same program, consecration and seminar business meeting in the afternoon. So you are blessed because we are having it first year. Uh, the, the, the second would, Sabbath will be the other uh, church, our sister church. Then we'll make it probably a three-part series. Uh, especially if we don't have the adventurer or the pathfinder uh, uh, meeting that we have regularly for our pathfinder and, and adventurer. I thought it this way because I'm inspired and encouraged of the uh, zeal and the energy of our young people, of our young adults that will encourage us, the seniors of the church. Amen. In fact, I, we, we, have, we have a surprise for you later on. We, the seniors, will be having a surprise for you. And you will be surprised. And you can, and you can, have, you can have an aha experience <laughs> when we will do that. Amen. <laughs> because you are making year 2024 a better 
uh, year than 2023 in the power of God. Amen. So uh, we are to speak about holiness to the Lord. Remember in the Jewish economy, we got the priesthood uh, that was the, uh, devised, planned by God in order for him to have that uh, communication line uh, from the priest, uh, from the people, and, and the go-between would be the priest to God. And we got Aaron and his children, and we got the Levites as part of this uh, uh, priesthood. But uh, I'm not dealing with the theology of uh, the priesthood. I will we'll take some practical lessons out of this experience of the priest. Holiness to the Lord. Let's, let's read this. They made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and inscribed it like the engravings of a signet. And what is inscri inscribed? Help me now. Holy to the Lord. It's speaking that any one of these priests, whether it be Aaron, the great high priest, and his children, they are presenting to the people the holiness of the Lord. And so we officers of the church, we are presenting the holiness of the Lord once we discharge our duties, once we do this uh, service that we, we, we have in the position, in the roles, and the responsibilities in, in, in the church. But it's not only we, the officers, that will present the holiness of the Lord, but you also, members of the church, whether you be not an officer of the church, as long as you are a part of the body of Christ, we are to present the holiness of the Lord. That's why we got that scripture reading that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Because it's, it, it doesn't only mean that we, the officers, me, the pastor, we, the elders, or we, the officers of the church, will be presenting the holiness to the Lord. But you and, and, and any one of us, even our children, can manage to present that holiness of God because he's speaking about the character, uh, the, the holy character of God. And we, our children, is looking at us, on us, as the parents, the model and the mentor for holiness. Amen? And, and let's picture the priestly garment. You got a turban. You see the turban there? I don't know if you know it doesn't work with this. Okay. You got the plate on the head. There's a turban. That's where the, the engravings holy to the Lord is. It means that it is speaking about your frontal front lobe, uh, lobe of the brain. It's where your, your will, it's where your decision, your judgment is found. And, and God is telling us in the priestly garment of uh, Aaron that our minds, your mind, must be reflecting the holiness of God. Let, that's why Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, and think of that, uh, uh, the significance of how this priestly garment is presenting the holiness of the Lord. And, and in all of their ministration, their ministry in, in the sanctuary. It is speaking of the real substance, the real uh, 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 meaning of what they are doing, whether they be the common priests that are ministering in the court, in the, out, in the courtyard, in the outside courts of the sanctuary, because it's only the high priest who can go to the holy place uh, every day and then once a year to the most holy place. But all of their ministry, all of their sacrifices is pointing to the Messiah that is coming. And so when we as officers of the church do ministry for the Lord, we are also, we, we must picture that incarnational ministry of Christ in our lives. And I, 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 I uh, commend your volunteering spirit. As I, as, as I would always say, there are two kinds of workers in the church. One is the paid workers, me the, the pastor, and you the unpaid workers. You, you volunteer your time. You sacrifice your time. But all of this working together will mean that our, our ministry 
is presenting that kind of ministry that Christ had shown when he was here on earth, who came to seek and to save that which was lost and to serve but not to be ministered unto. Amen. Sometimes we officers uh, would have that kind of mentality that it's power. You know, when I was the uh, uh, ministry director in the Philippines, I, I would really be so frank with the officers of the church that don't use your position as, the, as power, as authority, but it's for service. Amen? You know, because when you have that kind of mentality, once that office is already removed or you are not being nominated in the committee, and you think of yourself as powerless, then you, you will even hate the committee. You will even hate the pastor. You would even hate the head elder. Why? Because they didn't mention your name in the nominating committee or did not recommend your name in the nominating committee. And now you are powerless. But that's not what your role and responsibility means. It is service. And we will, we will move to that later. But again, in all of our ministry, we must be presenting that incarnational ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. I think it's I stuck again. <laughs> I don't know what is having. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me go now. No, 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 no. Let's go back. Let's go back, please. What does the word holy to the Lord mean? It is telling us that the God we serve, as Brother Hansel was saying, we got a great God, greater than our problem. But He's not only great in power, He is holy. He is powerful, amen. He is majestic. He is the the, the, the overall uh, uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you have Lords, you have Kings. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this, this uh, holy to the Lord means that you officers, me, the officers of the church, we as members of the church must have a holy consecration. And, 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 and that's why we ordain elders. We ordain deacons. But that's just a kind of presentation or affirmation of the church that we are ordaining this individual as an elder of the church. We are ordaining this individual as deacon of the church uh, for their service. But did you know that all of us needs also to be anointed of the Lord? Amen. We need the anointing power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing power of the Holy Spirit will help us to be a holy nation, a peculiar people. The very reason why they are ordained it is because they are, they are uh, set aside, set apart for a holy purpose. And, and not only that they are also set apart for a holy purpose because even you that are not officers of the church, you are also set apart for a holy purpose. Why? Because God's original plan is for you to live a holy life. Amen. So it doesn't accept anyone. Everybody can be used by God in a holy purpose. Praise God. That's why I told you, if you were not nominated and you were not voted here, named here and nominated, you can still volunteer your time. It doesn't mean that since I'm, you're not an officer, you'll be SDA, sitting down always. Yes. They, they are the go-between. Between men and God. That's the difference between a priest and a prophet. The prophet would be from God to man. Priest is from man to God. And, and, and that is so sacred a privilege given to each one of us. It's not only our officers of the church, it's not only the pastor or the elders or the deacons that are ordained. It's all of us. Why? Because you are a royal priesthood. Amen. And then he says, Thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory. What does that mean? And for beauty. Wow. What does that mean? That the priest, the, uh, Aaron, the high priest, has a garment that is intended for glory, it says. 
and for beauty. Just look at it. You know, somebody said, a scholar, I read an article of a scholar, and he said, when Aaron is walking, he's like a mini tabernacle. You know, the, 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 the precious stones that are found in the garment is found also in the sanctuary. So it's like a mini sanctuary telling the people or showing to the people that there be somebody who will be coming to tabernacle with us, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We got Jesus. That's the glory of God. And he is telling us that we need also to glorify him in our words and in our actions because he said, when I be lifted up before men, I will draw all men to myself. And Paul, writing to this glory, that we have this garment of glory, that we have this garment of beauty, telling us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Sometimes, oh, I would like to prepare a program. I would like to prepare this plan so that it will... I will have the praises and the commendations and the appreciations and the plaque that will be given to me. You miss the point. If that is the intention of planning good, having a program good, you miss the point because it must really be all to the glory of God. Amen. And, and, and you know, when it is for the glory of God, when I miss appreciating you, when people miss commending you and giving you all the praises, you don't feel any anger or any res resentment. Why? Because what you have done is not for you, it's for the glory of God. Amen? You know, some people would say, oh, the pastor didn't appreciate me. Oh, the members didn't appreciate me. So, he's, go he's going back to SDA, sitting down always. Why? Because to him, and to her, it's for his glory. But Paul says, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And then he says in Galatians 2.20, in order for us to, to be having that garment of beauty, which is the righteousness of the saints, Revelation 19 says, and that righteousness of the saints is in us because the righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed and imparted to us. Praise the Lord. And that's why we don't have no, nothing to boast. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. In fact, in another verse, he said, I die daily. And then he says, he says, I live, yet not I lives in me. Who lives in Paul's heart, in, in Paul's life, who lives in your life. Is Jesus Christ. And then he says, and the life, remember this, the life that I live in the flesh is because of the faith, the faith that I have to the one who loved me and gave his life for me. That's why when you read Philippians chapter 2, everything that I have, he says, even he is, he is the, he is a Pharisee of the Pharisee. Remember that? If you read his resume in Philippians chapter 2, when it comes to zeal as a Pharisee, he's number one. When it comes to intellectual uh, IQ, his IQ, probably even his EQ, he's number one because he graduated in the school of Gamaliel. He was under the tutelage of the great professor of, of, uh, of, of the time, Dr. Gamaliel. And so he says, I am, I can be boastful of what I have. But he said, I consider them all as garbage. Dung. That was, that was his word in the King James Version. Dung. D-U-N-G. What is dung? Like, like the poor or uh, bull, right? Sheep. He considers them garbage. And the reason why he's considering it garbage, it is because for the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why when we have Christ in our lives, we can live a holy life. People can, can be watching us and they will be surprised how so saint you are, saintful you are, how good you are, and how forgiving you are, and how humble you are. 
Because you are not walking in the flesh, you are walking in the spirit. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul says that I die daily. And, and praise the Lord, we got Jesus Christ. It says here, God through Jesus Christ is our crown of glory and diadem of beauty. One of the prophets says, in that day the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. What does this mean? Bible study tools, it says here, glorious crown surrounding, what's how this glorious crown Helps us and encourages us in our spiritual experience. Surrounding, adorning, and protecting his people, granting them his presence, giving them his grace and large measures of it, causing them to live soberly, righteously, and what? Godly. And so when people look at you, they are amazed. You are a good and a godly person. Praise God. When both the kingly and the priestly glory should be restored, the one being signified by the crown of glory. That's why when we get to heaven, we have the crown of glory. We have the crown of everlasting life that will not fade away. And the other by the diadem of beauty. And that's why in Revelation 19, it says the bride is ready. It's ready, it says, there to be a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because he is already clothed with that white, fine linen, that white linen represents the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But then, John the Revelator also says there that the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Why is it now called my righteousness, righteousness? It is because we accept Christ as our Savior and as our Lord. And He imputed His righteousness on you. He imparted His righteousness on you. And so you have the beauty of character of Jesus Christ. Amen? Not, no longer... The old man is living. It's the new man in Christ Jesus living. Amen. Think of this. God has beautified you. His glory is revealed in your beauty of character that he bestows upon us in Christ. That's what I was saying. The imputation and the impartation. God bestows his beauty upon his people, upon their sanctuary. Speaking now of the children of Israel, when they were having all of these uh, ministries, sacrifices in the sanctuary, upon those things dedicated to him. Whatever you do, dearly beloved, it must be devoted and dedicated to the Lord. It's not to the pastor so that the pastor will have a good name in the conference. No. It, it must be devoted and dedicated to the Lord. And what's this? What's this now? If you do things that will be devoted and dedicated to the Lord, it brings, you, it brings your pastor also a good name in the conference, right? But that should not really be my own agenda. It should not really be your own agenda. But your agenda, when, do, when you do all of this, duties and responsibilities as a church officer, and even as members, you are doing it for God's glory. And we are doing it in the mind of Christ, that we have his garment, pure and white, a diadem of beauty. This is what I was telling you a while ago, that the garment of the priest is called Clothes of service. It's not clothes of power and authority. It's clothes of service. I got a head elder before. I was a young pastor, young intern. He was so very, if I would even use the word authoritarian, not even, not, not only authoritative, very authoritarian. And to me, coming fresh from school, I said, my, this is what my pastoral ministry professor taught us. That in the church you will find all of this. But it didn't distract my service, my, my clothes of service. Why? Because I am there to represent the incarnational ministry of Jesus Christ as a young pastor. So when you, when you serve, I challenge you officers of the church. When we serve, it should really be a clothes of service. What does that mean? It says here, those that wear robes of honor, that's garment of service, must look upon them as clothes of service, those upon whom honor is put. You, officers of the church, service, what now? Is expected. 
we may not only be SDA. <laughs> we may not only be sitting down always. Because service is expected. And when service is expected on, on you and, and, and members are seen, members will come and cooperate and collaborate with you. Praise the Lord. That's why this afternoon, be back for the seminar because we'll be talking about how the ecclesia as a community of believers will be working together for the glory of God in order for each one to have the clothes of service. The clothes of ministry. Not everyone is a pastor, but everyone is a minister. Amen? So we are all ministers of God. Dr. Matthew Henry, in his, uh, uh, I don't know why my phone will change when it's, <laughs> this is not the phone that I use in my, in my computer. It's even hard for me to read. The priest's garments were rich and splendid. Think of that. Just picture it, rich and splendid. The church was thus taught by the shadows. Yes, all of the ministrations that they have, the services that they have. Christ is our great high priest. When he undertook the work of our redemption, he put on the clothes of service. Yes, when Aaron will put that clothes now, when he is uh, robe in that garment, he's already in that clothes of service. It's the same way when Christ came. He, he arrayed himself with the gifts of grace and graces of the Spirit, took charge of all God's spiritual Israel, laid them near his heart. Picture that uh, priestly garment again. Uh, Aaron has those uh, uh, names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Engraved them on the palms of his hands when he was hanging on the cross. He was thinking of you. He was thinking of me. Amen. He presented them to his father and he crowned himself with holiness to the Lord. When he was here on earth, he presented the holiness of his father, holy father. Consecrating his whole understanding to the honor of his father's holiness. What's this now? Hello, true believers. True believers are spiritual priests. That's why we believe the priesthood of all believers. We don't need to go to a priest and confess. And that priest will mediate for us now. We are all priests before the Lord. That's, that's what he told them when he brought them out of Egypt. That you will be priests and kings. True believers are spiritual priests. The clean linen with which all the clothes of service must be made is the righteousness of the chain, uh, saints. Matthew Henry's concise commentary of the Bible. The very reason why he established that priesthood it is because he would like to have an God would like to have an intimate relationship with these people. And since you are having the priesthood of all believers, you are in an intimate, deeper, and higher relationship with Jesus Christ. The problem sometimes is we don't think it that way. We think it so casually. It's only when we come to church, since it's a holy Sabbath day, that we put a face that is holy also. And sometimes even not. <laughs> and that's why we have problems even in church, even Saturday. <laughs> Why? Because we are having a not a not 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 the glow of the glory of God, not the splendor and the beauty of the garment of Jesus Christ. So he wants a relationship. That's the reason why he created man, the crowning glory of his creation. That's why when they failed and and, and they transgressed his law, he was looking for them. God came in the coolness of the day, trying to find that trying to have continue that relationship with man with Adam and Eve but they were separated from sin that's why he was calling out Adam Adam where now and he's calling out to you dearly beloved at this very moment those that are watching via live stream God is calling you where art thou are you ready to have uh, that signet of the holy uh, to the Lord that signet of the holiness of the Lord engraved in your for in your forehead in your mind in your heart so that you'll be thinking about the holiness of God. And so when you go out to work somewhere else, when you go out in the community, when you are with your friends, they can see and they can feel you. The holiness of God. Amen. And one thing that is also reminding us in that relationship, it says that it's governed by God's holiness and righteousness. It's not governed by any of your ethical standards. 
your moral ethics, your good ethics. It's not. It's governed by the by God's holiness. That's why it's engraved here. Yeah. The signet is in a, tor a torban uh, that is in the forehead of the priest, in the head of the priest, telling the priest that the holiness of God must be lived out in your life. The holiness of God must be lived out in our lives. Amen? Everyday life of the priest, it's consecrated to the Lord. That's why Ellen White says in Steps to Christ that you've got to consecrate your life to the Lord. Make this your very first work. Because once we consecrate our lives to God early in the morning, we put God first in our lives. Whatever happens after that, God is in control. It may be something that the devil would try to shake our faith, our relationship with, uh, with God. But since we already have consecrated our lives to him early that morning. And in fact, Ellen White even goes to say that I have my life on your hands. Own it, Lord. So that we can also pray like Jesus when he was here on earth. Not my will, but thine will be done. When we do that consecration every day of our lives, anything that will happen, it will still be. If you do something, all for the glory of God. You are in adversities, still all for the glory of God. Still praises and worship and adoration to Him. Who have done so much to you will be coming from, out from your lips. Not grumbling, not murmuring. But it's all praises to the Lord. Amen. And then he says, the bottom line is, the priests were, were always to respect the holiness of Jehovah as they administered the office. You know, when I was ordained in the ministry, when the hands was over me, my, I felt the sacredness and the heaviness, the load of ministry. That's the time that I cried. When I was an intern doing anything uh, in pastoral ministry without the ordination, I didn't... I didn't feel the sacredness and the holiness like when I have felt it when I was ordained. And I don't know why I could not I could not hold my feelings. I was crying, I was weeping. Especially when my wife, when all of the spouses of the ministers that were ordained were called in front and they have a the circle of prayers for all of us. I was crying. Because I could see the holiness of God. And I ran short of that holiness of God. And my prayer then was, Use me, Lord, for your glory. I was the youngest in that group of ordination. My wife also the youngest. And that was, the, that was the concern before the union leaders. He's too young. But our leader said, yeah, he's too young. But he is already mature enough to be ordained. When the president talked with me, I said, yeah, I'm young. I'm young pastor, I said, I'm young. But if you'll give me the privilege, then I will take that holy mantle that God is giving me. And I will protect it in the power of God so that it will be glory to Him. And it will be a diadem of beauty. And so, when something happens, especially temptations will come. You know, in the Philippines, we got what we say, temptations for pastors, it's quarto, O quarta. <laughs> it's quarto o quarta. That's the that's the that's the, that's the common temptations of pastors in ministry, even here in America. It's either money or woman. Quarto o quarta. <laughs> and thank God. Yeah, I I. I have a lot of temptations. But thank God, God is reminding me that the signet that is in my 
frontal lobe is holiness to the Lord. And that's what I would like you to think about, you officers of the church. And that is what I would like you to think about, you members of the church. We are holy to the Lord. Amen. Our lives are to reflect the heart that has been set apart unto God. Think of that. A heart that loves God completely, not only half half, should be completely, thoroughly, totally. As we walk in love, watch this now, as we walk in love, we are clothed in glory and beauty. In fact, Paul says in Colossians, we are uh, uh, having that bond of perfection which is love. And the priesthood was to present that reality to God's children just as contemporary ministers are to their flock. Elders of God are always set apart for God's use. They are always living with the presence of God in their lives. God in us makes us sacred. Amen. God in us makes you sacred, makes me sacred or holy. Elders reflect all of God upon all of God's people. And here comes the conclusion of everything that we have heard today. Whether you be officers of the church, whether you be members of the church, this is the challenge. For as many as you were baptized unto, into Christ have put on Christ. Let's put on Christ. We got beautiful dresses when we come to church. We beautiful suits when we come to church. But God is not looking at the outward appearance. He's looking at the heart. Amen. If we were able to put on Christ through the week. And when we come here in church. We celebrate how God has been so good to us. That we were able to have that works of service. That clothes of service. That we were having uh, that garments of glory. And that garments of beauty. In our lives. In our Christian lives. Every day. And that's why it says as we end. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Spiritual sacrifices when you, we come to church. Yes, pastor, we, 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 we drive long distance coming here. Praise the Lord. I said to one member, of our, uh, one visitor of our church who is located far, 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 I said, they always tell me that nothing is too far or nothing is too far when you have a car. Do you have a car? And he said, oh, you have a car? I have a car, Pastor. So it's not far. Just drive. And you sacrifice. Why? Because it's just a spiritual sacrifice. Yeah, gasoline is up. Sacrifice. Why? Because you would like to be in the community of believers. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you would like to be a part of Metropolitan Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. And then he says, but ye are a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth. That's where the gospel commission comes in now. That you should show forth the, gospel, the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's a challenge for each one of us. Not SDA, not sitting down always, but seeking diligently all. Amen. That all might be your spouse. That all might be your family member. That all might be your workmate. That all might be your relatives, your friends. But God says, show forth that glory. Show forth that beauty. The praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who would like Today, to consecrate themselves as we start this year, 2024. To consecrate themselves to the Lord. Who would like to stand with me today? And don't stand because your seatmate is standing. Think of it personally. Internalize it personally. If you are able and ready to consecrate yourself today. Stand with me where you are. Because God says, I would like you to show forth the praises of him. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I ask also Brian in their luck in today. That if, they, if he can draw the children, our children, to a consecration service also. So that they can still be a part 
of this consecration service that we are here as a metro as a church family of metropolitan church and hopefully they have not forgotten my request to them and i would like that now that we are standing all of the officers of our church here to join me here in front as we pray for each one officers of the church for year 2024 please come here in front Telling to God that you would like to have that clothes of service. That you would like to have that diadem of beauty. That you would like to have that garments for glory. And as you stand with me today, we can fill up here in, in the pulpit. Come here in front. And as members that are not in the office role of our church, looking at us. In this clothes of service, in this name of beauty, in this garment of glory, that they can say in their hearts and in their mind, I will support the pastor, I will support the elders, I will support the ministry leaders. If I can just be a part in their program, let me have it, Lord. I believe that would be the prayer. They don't want to be just SDA sitting down always. But they would also be like you in that clothes of service. And let's ask the, all of the elders for year 2024 to please join me here in the pulpit as we raise our hands for blessings for both of our officers for year 2024 and for our members. And as we pray, dearly beloved, Think of what you have heard today. If you, have, if you have forgotten everything, just don't forget that you are holy to the Lord. That we are all holy to the Lord. I am holy to the Lord. Say it. Come on. Join me. I am holy to the Lord. God bless us. Father in heaven. As we have consecrated ourselves to you, Lord. Because Paul even says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. We are here, Lord, standing. Not only as elders, not only as officers of ministries and departments of the church, but even as members, because we are all a holy nation a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. And as we raise our hands over your people, Father, as elders of the church, that your blessings, your guidance, and your care will be first to our officers, that whatever they plan, it will be for the glory of your name. And it will also redound to the beauty of our character in Jesus Christ. And secondly, to our members that are not in the office role of our church. And even guests that are here, that whenever they are with us, joining us in our worship for today, in any Sabbath worship that we have, that they are here and they belong to you, holy to the Lord. We are all in one mind with Jesus Christ. So your blessings in came upon us all and anoint us, Father, afresh with spirit. So that as Paul says, I live, yet not I lives, but Christ lives in me. And we can also say in the life that I live in the flesh, I live in the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. May your favors now and blessings be upon us all as your people today and forevermore as we move on to year 2024 is our prayer. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Thank you very much. God bless. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Life in Jesus Christ. Shall we all?
most then take my life and let it be consecrated lord to thee take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless crazy my life and let it be Father, most gracious God of the universe, we consecrate ourselves to you as we have stood up. We have consecrated, Lord, all to you. May be our life, may it be that our lives would represent the holiness of the Lord that we serve, the God that we serve in every walks of life that we are at in any dealings that we have with our fellow man even we the community of believers will represent the glory will represent the beauty of the clothes of service that you have given to us first with the officers and also all of our members and when all is said and done when we will come to the kingdom of glory, you will tell us, say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in this. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. May all of us will find ourselves in that beautiful glorious kingdom that you have prepared for us so help us in the meantime to be clothes of service not only in our church but even to anyone so that we can present the incarnational ministry of jesus in our words and in our deeds it's because this will only bring glory to your name put us in that pedestal of a life that is approved of you. That we will put on Christ now and forevermore. And as we move on through year 2024, we will continue on putting Christ in our lives so that we'll not be walking in the flesh, but walking in the spirit. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. We love you for the anointing afresh of your Holy Spirit in us. For we pray in Jesus' name.